ladies and gentlemen, Bill Squire. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys all so much. It's awesome to be here, and you're all doing what you have to do. You're wearing your mask. I know it sucks wearing a mask, but you're doing it. Uh, it seems like the people that don't want to wear the mask, especially at this point, are the ones that even if there wasn't a pandemic, would look better in a mask. Uh, <laughs> there are always the ones like, I don't wear a mask because I don't like when people tell me what to do. I'm like, yeah, I knew that based on your teeth because... <laughs> Someone's like, hey, why don't you brush your teeth? I ain't brushing my teeth. <laughs> and now you got a freedom smile and no mask. <laughs> your liberty grin gave you away. <laughs> it's nice to be out doing things, though. And, you know, I know that they don't want us to be healthy in America. And I knew this long before the pandemic. All right? Here's how I knew they didn't want us to be healthy in America. Walgreens has a rewards program for their pharmacy. <laughs> Not the store. The pharmacy has its own separate rewards program. That's hilarious. That means the sicker you are, the more points you earn. <laughs> Imagine going to the doctor and the doctor's like, all right, I got some good news and I got some bad news. Good news, if you go to Walgreens, you're gonna earn so many points. <laughs> Bad news, you only got six to eight months to use them. <laughs> Sorry about that. <sighs> they don't want us to be healthy in America. We have all-you-can-eat buffets. We, yeah, but we don't need all-you-can-eat buffets in America. We need all-you-should-eat buffets. <laughs> yeah. You know how that works? You load up your plate, and before you get to sit down, you have to show all the food you have to someone that's in way better shape than you. Just walk up to them and you're like, huh? And they're like, hmm. And you're like, okay, I'll try again. <laughs> 24 hour gyms, that's another scam. That's for people like me that are like, oh, I'm too busy to go to the gym. I got a crazy schedule. Everything's always moving around. And then you join the 24 hour gym, you're like, oh, that's not the problem. Uh, <laughs> a motivation issue <laughs> yeah I had a health scare a couple of years ago my right eye stopped working for a few minutes that was terrifying <laughs> lost vision in my right eye for a few minutes it happened on the air on the Alan Cox show and at the time Erica was on the show and she was talking about her husband losing his job and she was like crying she was emotional it's like he lost his job i don't know what we're gonna do and i'm like hey you think that's bad check this out <laughs> really stole her thunder it's very funny and uh and then she she asked me she's like are you allergic to anything i'm like i'm not allergic to seeing like that's not if someone brings a peanut in the room i'm not like w where'd you go uh so I had to spend the night in the hospital, and when I was in the hospital, they did a bunch of tests, they did like a CAT scan, MRI, EKG, a bunch of blood work, and before they gave me any res results back on the test, a nurse came into my room and dropped off a booklet that basically said, this is how you deal with having a stroke. <laughs> and I was like, hey. <laughs> did I have a stroke? <laughs> and she was a good nurse, she's like, uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> And I was like, well, real quick, because I know you're busy. Um, <laughs> what are the things that cause strokes? And she's like, stress. And I was like, well, you know what I find stressful? <laughs> Being given literature on having a stroke when you're not sure if I had a stroke. And she goes, whoop, that is stressful. And she left. Uh, <laughs> 
And I was like, figure out who burnt toast out there. <laughs> Some of you guys know the signs of a stroke. Uh, that's not, somebody actually did burn toast. I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> Turns out the doctor told me it wasn't a stroke. He told me it was something called an ocular, ocular migraine, which I think is just a fancy doctor way of saying, we don't really know what happened, <laughs> but you should probably use that 24-hour gym membership you have. <laughs> and I'm going to write you a prescription. And you know what? If you go to Walgreens, <laughs> so many points. <laughs> got to celebrate everything you can right now too because it was such a bad year so everything is worth celebrating right now like i just hit 10,000 steps yeah thank you yeah since last march <laughs> what's the rush you know i also i just bought a condo C couple other divorced people here that's cool uh <laughs> I love my condo, it's got a lake view, Lake Erie, so not the best lake, but I like it. <laughs> I like watching the helicopters look for bodies, that's fun for me. <laughs> They're just out there circling, then they drop that claw down, it's like, got him, got him, got him, got him, dropped him. It's rigged. It's rigged. No one can win at this game. <laughs> But now that I own a place, I have to fix stuff, so I have to go to Home Depot all the time. And uh, whenever I, remember when that's all we could do, was go to Home Depot? <laughs> like, we go to the grocery store in Home Depot, and that's pretty much it. I went there, and like, we were like, standing in line, like we're trying to get into a club. <laughs> trying to do like the little club tricks, like, hey, is Terry working today? They're like, nah. <laughs> nice try. Went there one time and I couldn't even find a parking spot in a Home Depot parking lot. Those are the biggest parking lots on the entire planet. I'm driving around forever. I can't find one. I finally get one. This old lady starts yelling at me. She's like, hey, I was going to park there. Didn't you see my turn signal? I was like, yeah, I knew you had it on, but I didn't know if you knew you had it on. Uh, <laughs> she got all mad. She's like, you ragamuffin out of box your ears. I don't know what that means. Uh, so I coughed on her. She's dead. Uh, wasn't even COVID. She just turned to dust. She was that old. Also, full disclosure, I was on mushrooms at the time, so I don't know what really happened. Maybe that happened. Maybe I was just home watching Avengers. <laughs> so. <laughs> I had to go there and uh, fix some plumbing stuff the other day. And uh, I was getting nervous when they asked me if I need help. It makes me feel like less of a man. And I think I get that from my dad because when I go to Home Depot with him as a kid, if they ever asked him for help, he would grab the nearest item and just say that's what he was looking for. They'd be like, sir, can I help you with anything? He'd be like, this is it. <laughs> and then he would buy that product while maintaining eye contact with that employee. <laughs> I know what I'm looking for. And then two weeks later, he'd go to a different Home Depot and return it. <laughs> Very stubborn man. So I had to go there the other day and fix some plumbing stuff, and I needed some PVC pipe. But the last thing I saw when I was walking around was the word HVAC, and so when the guy asked me if I need help with anything, I just started mushing letters together, and this is what came out. He's like, sir, is there anything I can help you with? I'm like, yeah, where do you guys keep your HPV? <laughs> and... <laughs> he didn't skip a beat. He goes, and my ex-wife. <laughs> You live in a condo too, huh? <laughs> uh, I do have an ex-wife. I have kids. Let me hear it in here if you got kids. I got three kids. They're actually my ex-wife's kids. 
from her first marriage, but I raise them like they're my own. I take care of them. I provide for them. They don't see their biological father. Thank you. One quiet clap up here. Nope. Too late. Too late. No. No. You guys already told your whole story right there. You're just like, hey, you don't have to do that. <laughs> Which is fine, because uh, let me explain. I also have a tattoo on my forearm right here. It says, why so serious? You can kind of see the end of it there. I got that after I saw The Dark Knight, like right after I saw The Dark Knight, like way too soon after I saw The Dark Knight. <laughs> and then on my wrist is my ex-wife's name. So like, yeah, yeah decisions aren't my thing. Uh, <laughs> I love my kids though, uh, stepkids, uh, and that's a different animal because stepkids are mean. Uh, they're real mean. Like the other day, my oldest daughter said to me, I hate you and I've always hated you. I know, in her defense, I did ask her to refill the Brita pitcher, so I probably had it coming. <laughs> I mean, the audacity of me to. <laughs> But uh, when she said that, it didn't even hurt my feelings because I've been around this kid so long. And when she said, I hate you and I've always hated you, what I heard was this. I'm 16 years old and I don't understand why my biological father is not a part of my life. It makes me sad. It makes me angry. I get emotional and I lash out at people and I don't mean it, but I'm sorry. But I do appreciate that you've taken time out of your life to care for me, love me, provide for me, and be a role model for me. And I hate you. <laughs> I also uh, bought a dog recently. Uh, I yeah. I bought a petite golden doodle, cause, you know, oh, I know, yeah. That's not how my friends reacted. <laughs> my one friend's like, why'd you get a gay dog? Uh, he's like, why don't you get a tough dog? Why don't you get a pit bull? I'm like, cause it doesn't matter. Even if I bought a pit bull, it's still me with a pit bull. <laughs> Like, if the pit bull gets tangled in his leash, I'm still like, ooh, who got tangy in his leashy? Like. <laughs> yeah. Love that dog. And I bought it. People give me a little guff for buying a dog. They're like, oh, you shouldn't buy dogs. You should adopt dogs. But they don't understand my situation. I live in a condo. I need a small dog that's hypoallergenic. That's not going to shed, blah, blah, blah. Those are my excuses. But what it comes down to is, I have rescue kids. I can buy a dog. <laughs> they love that joke. Uh, <laughs> that's not one of them. I like uh, taking my dog, I live near a rich neighborhood, and that's where I like to take her to poop. Uh, I feel like I'm getting back at the 1% a little bit. And uh, I took her over there the other day, and while she was going, this guy comes running out of his house, and he's screaming. He's like, sir, sir, your dog is pooping on my lawn. You must clean it up immediately. She wasn't even done yet. What did he want me to do, get under her? Like I'm making some dog do ice cream cone just like <laughs> let's put a little let's put a little swirl at the top there is that what you like sir <laughs> I was like I'll clean up you don't have to worry about it he's like I appreciate it because there's a lot of people that don't clean up and have small children and they'll play in the front yard and they'll find the dog poo and then they'll play with it and it gets everywhere and I didn't want to be the one that told to tell this guy that he's got weird kids. Because <laughs> that's not how kids operate. <laughs> kids aren't like, toys are so boring. A turd, gimme! <laughs> so I was just like, don't worry about it, sir. I'm gonna clean up. There's nothing you have to worry about. So I pick up my dog's stuff. I uh, put it in a bag, I continue on my walk, he goes into his house, and then on my way back to my house, I stopped at his house again and took that bag and put it in his mailbox. Because <laughs> if you assume I'm gonna be a bad person, I'll prove you right. <laughs> yeah. 
I, uh, I also have a niece. I hang out with her quite a bit. She's pretty hilarious. Uh, the other day, me and her mom, her, my sister, were taking her, not like AJ. Uh, <laughs> on the album, put a little liner note, and we'll be like, there's a reason people laugh there. You didn't hear it. <laughs> Consider yourself lucky. <laughs> but me and my, my sister were taking our uh, my niece into. <laughs> we're, taking, <laughs> we're taking our niece into a store, and we we're doing the thing where I had one arm and she had the other arm. And we were lifting her up in the air, we're going one, two, three, jump, one, two, three, jump, and we got a little bit off rhythm because white people and. Uh, <laughs> I pulled up on her arm before my sister did, and it hurt her arm. And then the rest of the day, she kept talking about how much her arm hurts. She's like, Bill, it hurt my arm. Uncle Bill, my arm hurts. Uncle Bill, my arm still hurts. Uncle Bill, it's been a while, my uncle, and my arm still hurts. And I kept apologizing. And finally, I was like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It was an accident. And she goes, no, Uncle Bill, you don't understand. Your arms are too strong. <laughs> they were made for hurting children. <laughs> I, I had no idea how to respond to that. <laughs> I was just stunned. And so after a little bit, I was like, okay, well, you don't understand. Your words are too mean. <laughs> They're made for hurting feelings. <laughs> and she goes, oh, did I hurt your feelings, Uncle Bill? I'm sorry. And I said, no. And I pulled on her other arm, Cobra Kai, no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's not going to be soft. <laughs> but when she joins a dance class, it's going to have to be an Irish one because she can't. <laughs> well, I was around when she was being potty trained, and I wasn't the potty trainer. But if you know how potty training works, like you have to be potty positive. So I was like the potty hype man. <laughs> and so anytime she went potty, she liked the praise. She, she'd invite anybody that was around to come watch her go potty. She's like, I gotta go potty. Everybody, let's go. And we go into the bathroom and I cheer for her. I'd be like, poop that poop, pee that pee. And she thought that's how people go potty. <laughs> So one time I'm over at their house, we're hanging out, I have to go potty. So I go and I'm doing what I do and she notices that I'm not around. She's like, mom, where's Uncle Bill? And she's trying to be potty positive and she's like, oh, he's on the toilet going potty, just like you. And she just stands up and goes, I wanna see it! <laughs> she takes off, bursts into the bathroom. <laughs> the door swings open. And there's a difference <laughs> when a child learns a lesson versus when a child learns a preference. <laughs> a lesson usually happens immediately. Don't touch the stove, the stove is hot. They touch the stove, burn their hand, lesson learned. A preference takes a moment to sink in. So when she burst into the bathroom, her senses were aflame. <laughs> she's hearing things. She's seeing things. She's smelling things. And if I'm going to be perfectly honest, she's probably tasting things a little bit. I know what I do in there, and it's not good. So all her senses are being assaulted. And that's when she realized that this is not something she wants to be a part of. <laughs> and from that day forward, she thought that bathroom stuff was stuff that she wanted to do on her own. And her mom thanked me for that. And when you're an uncle, you're not always there for 
all the first moments in your niece or nephew's life. Like I wasn't there for her first words. I wasn't there for her first steps, but I was there for the first time she ever left a room like this. Ooh. <laughs> I was raised uh, I was raised Mormon, and whenever people found out that I was Mormon as a kid, they'd always tease me. They'd be like, oh, Bill, you're Mormon? How many wives do you have? Right, and that hurt my feelings, and I'd start to cry and run home to my mom's. <laughs> I really was Mormon. I served a Mormon mission for two years in the Philippines, and while I was there, I learned a language that's completely useless to me now. Anybody know the national language of the Philippines? Tagalog, yeah, and when I read it on a piece of paper, I'm like, ooh, tag along. <laughs> this place is going to be delicious. That's a Girl Scout cookie. <laughs> that's where they come from. Uh, that's not what it was, though. But it was a very difficult language to learn, and I was brand new in the country, and I'm walking down the street one day, and this guy pulls a knife on me. And it wasn't scary, because he was Filipino. He was this big. Uh, <laughs> And I had this kind of great moment where I grabbed the knife out of his hand and I threw him on the ground and I wanted to yell at him and say something intimidating like, get away from me, you scumbag. But I didn't know the language that well, so instead I said, ito," which basically means, these bananas are too expensive. <laughs> I still said it in like an angry tone. Uh, that was just the most aggressive phrase that I knew at the time. And I, I think he got the point. <laughs> so when you go on a Mormon mission, uh, Mormons are strict, but when you're a missionary, they're extra strict. You can't watch TV, you can't listen to music, you can't go see movies. And I started to break those rules by drinking alcohol and going to strip clubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're, they're fun. <laughs> Over there, they're fun. <laughs> they're not exactly strict. Uh, the first time I go to one, it's me and two other missionaries that I corrupted. And, <laughs> and we go in, and we're the only Americans in the whole place. And all the girls are trying their best to get our attention. One girl comes out, takes off all her clothes, takes a piece of ice out of the bucket, rubs it on a very intimate part of her body, and then dropped it into my beer. Yeah. So I accidentally spilled that on purpose, because <laughs> you're not even supposed to drink the water over there, so. <laughs> Long story short, I hooked up with a whole bunch of Filipinas, got caught, was excommunicated from the Mormon church, and may or may not have between like one and 15 illegitimate children over there. <laughs> and chances are, they made some of the clothes we're wearing tonight. <laughs> Oh, oh, screw you, they're my kids, they're gonna work. They're not gonna be lazy and spoiled like my stepkids, like, I want an iPhone, make it. <laughs> a lot of people don't even know that the Mormon church is a Christian church. It's, the actual name of the church has the word Christ in it. It's called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And when I was a kid, I didn't really like going to church, and I was also kind of dumb. So I was like, I don't really like church, but Latter-day sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> but they do a lot of stuff that other churches do. Like, they do baptism. Right? A lot of churches do Like, Catholics, you guys do baptism. You just do it at a different time. Like, when Catholics do it when you're a baby, right? You take the baby, get its head a little bit wet, baby's good to go. <laughs> and now, they're putting Catholic baptisms on like the internet, on TikTok and stuff. And there's two kinds. There's good ones, and then there's ones that don't go so well. <laughs> the good ones are like, it's like a smooth young priest, and he baptized the baby like a cool way, like he's already got his chips, but the guac just came out and he's excited, just like, yeah. <laughs> Those are okay. I like the ones where things go a little wrong. 
where it's an older priest and he, you know, he's trying to baptize the baby and then he fumbles it a little bit and he's just like. <laughs> and I always comment the same thing. I'm like, whoo, that priest didn't touch that kid enough. But Mormons decided to do baptism too. They're like, oh, we're going to do baptism too. But they decided you have to wait for the age of accountability. And they decided the age of accountability, and we do this all the time in our society, by the way, age of accountability. You get a certain responsibility that goes with a certain age. So like 18 or 16, you can drive a car. 18, you can join the armed forces. 21, you can drink alcohol. I think we should switch those around a little bit. I think 16, drive a car. 18, drink alcohol. And 65, you can join the armed forces. Uh, all those boomers are like, I love America. Prove it. Uh, <laughs> so Mormons said, oh, we do uh, age of accountability for baptism. They decided that the age of accountability for baptism is eight years old, which makes sense. Because obviously, by the time you're eight years old, you know enough about the world <laughs> to choose the eternal destination of your immortal soul. <laughs> your own body just barely started trusting you with teeth. <laughs> but go ahead, get baptized. All right? I don't know why they don't follow what happened in the actual Bible. How old was Jesus when he got baptized? Like 30 years old. That makes sense because the whole symbolism behind baptism is to wash away sin. And when you're a baby and you're eight, you don't have any sin. But when you're 30? <laughs> I don't care what you believe. You go down in that water, you come out, and you're like, I needed that. <laughs> That was nice. I don't even know. I just, I just liked it. <laughs> now, I'm not a very religious guy anymore. Not religious at all. And then I tell people that, and they'll be like, yeah, me either. I'm an atheist. I believe in science. And I, here's the thing. I don't like science either. <laughs> I believe in it. I just, it's too mean. Science ruins my day all the time. Like, I would love to jump on a trampoline, but science is like, hold your horses, fatso. <laughs> we'll take you down. We're not bringing you back up. <laughs> science is so mean. Science does not care about it, whether you believe in it. And science will just take away things that you thought were a thing. Like, remember when Pluto used to be a planet? And then science is like, no. <laughs> it's a dwarf planet. I'm like, well, excuse me, science. Uh, it still has the word planet in it. And it's like, dwarf planet, not a planet. Take it off the list. Ooh, keep that scientist away from people. Person, person. Sorry, buddy. I know you guys are like, oh, I don't want to laugh at that. There might be a Pluto in here somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Science is mean when you're fat. Science is so mean when you're fat. Like, I have stretch marks on my body. That's science. It's tapping into my body. <laughs> but I don't even like to think of them as stretch marks. I like to pretend that they're tattoos of flames. All over there on my legs, everywhere. People, if I take my shirt off in public, people are like, "Hey, man, who did your tats?" I'm like, "Trans fats." Uh, <laughs> uh, they start as fats, but now they identify as stretch marks. <laughs> and they can go into any bathroom they want. <laughs> I, uh, 
I have one friend, like my diet is terrible. That's why I'm fat. I have one friend, uh, his diet also terrible, but he's really skinny because he's got Crohn's disease. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, how do I get that? <laughs> He's like, Bill, you can't catch it. Either you have it or you don't. I'm like, yeah, right. Give me some of your blood. And he's like, Bill, it's not a good disease. I poop my pants all the time. I'm like, yeah, so do I. At least you're skinny. <laughs> Take it. You have shameful moments when you're a fat guy. Like I went to Cedar Point one time. You already know this story. You, you, you know where the story's going, like, you know. I get on uh, the top drill dragster and I sit down and I try to pull the seatbelt across and it wouldn't reach the buckle. And the girl's like, sir, if you can't buckle your seatbelt, you can't ride the ride. I'm like, just let me ride the ride. And she's like, sir, it's dangerous. You could get hurt, you could even die. I'm like, listen. I'd rather be remembered as the person that was killed on the roller coaster than as the person that was too fat to ride it. Yeah, obviously I didn't ride it, I'm alive. Uh, but one of the employees tried to make me feel bad. They're like, oh, don't worry about it. But LeBron James was here last week and he didn't fit either. And I was like, do you think maybe it was for a different reason? Do you think maybe LeBron might have been too tall and not trying to stuff his love handles? into different parts of his body. <laughs> and she's like, I'm just trying to make you feel better. I'm like, well, it didn't work. <laughs> I'm gonna go eat your food now. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm a weird guy, all right? <laughs> I'm a weird guy, and it's not my fault, it's my mom's fault, I went to therapy, that's how it works. You go to therapy, you tell them about your life, and they go, tell me about your parents. And they go, eh, eh, eh. and they go, oh, 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 I see. <laughs> Here's what my mom did. And anybody else's mom do this, where anything that was bad in your life became entertainment for her and her friends because reality TV wasn't a thing yet? <laughs> Anytime anything went wrong in my life, my mom would get on the phone and talk to her friends about my life in front of me. She'd be like, hey Donna, just got back from the doctor with Billy, 16 years old, still not going through puberty. <laughs> Nothing going on down there. No, Don, I wasn't in the room with them when they checked, that'd be weird. The doctor told me loudly in the waiting room in front of people he goes to school with. <laughs> yeah, there's a girl there that he has a crush on, but she doesn't like him back. She put him in something called the friend zone, and I'm like, that sounds sweet, but he said it's a bad thing. For whatever reason, he doesn't have a lot of confidence. Hopefully it won't manifest in a way where he needs the approval of strangers to be happy. <laughs> And it didn't. <laughs> no, it did so hard. <laughs> it's not her fault that she's weird, though, because her parents messed her up. Like, my mom's name is Susan, and her parents always called her Susan, and that's weird. You don't call a small child Susan. You call her Susie because that's adorable. You don't call, you don't be like, this is her daughter, Susan, and she's a little. That's, like, Susan's a bank teller. Stop that. That's weird. I don't like. <laughs> Like, my name is Bill, but when I was little, I was Billy. I graduated to Bill when I got my pubes. <laughs> I remember the morning I came downstairs, and I was like, Hi, Billy, what would you like for breakfast? And I'm like, it's Bill now. I had a pretty eventful evening, so I'll be going as Bill from now on. And also, I'll be doing my own laundry from now on. <laughs> also, like, names are weird. Like, if you have a son and his name's Paul, when he's little, you gotta call him Paulie, because that's cute. You don't call a small child Paul, that's weird. <laughs> you don't call a toddler Paul, he don't be like, this is our son Paul. <laughs> he's three years old, he goes to bed on time. 
He eats all his vegetables and he watched Frozen once and that was enough for him. <laughs> oh, Paul's gonna be a serial killer. I don't like him. I don't like your weird Paul. I think it's funny too that people that have young names are gonna be old soon and I think that's gonna be hilarious when people are introducing their grandparents that have young names. Like, this is my grandpa, Cody. I'm like, Cody's not a grandpa name. Yeah, there he is. <clears throat> and that's my grandma, Michaela. I'm like, stop doing this. I don't like it. <laughs> but the worst thing you can do with the name is give someone a regular name and then spell it all willy nilly. Stop. That's gotta stop. When someone's like, this is our daughter, Sarah, <laughs> but we spelled it with our heart. P S E I. R R the quadratic formula A <laughs> H. We just thought it was cute. <laughs> like, well, she can never get coffee now, so <laughs> I know you guys are probably already back in the office, or maybe you're going back to the office soon, and here's something that you need to remember when you go back to the office. The better the candy on someone's desk, the worse the conversation you're about to have. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you guys don't follow, here's, let me explain. It goes the other way too, because there's some people, terrible candy, great conversations. There's one guy I work with, very funny guy, nice guy, we talk about m movies, music, sports, we have great conversations, but his candy's trash. It's not even candy, it's raisins. It's little dusty boxes of raisins. Because he's worked there for 10 years and no one's ever touched them. You ever hear someone call raisins nature's candy? Yeah, that's why we invented candy. <laughs> Nature was not getting it done. Nobody wants to win a gold ticket to that factory. Like, oh my God, I'm going to Dole. <laughs> like, Hi, I'm Kevin, I'll be your tour guide today here at Dole. These are grapes. Now we wait. <laughs> In a couple hours, I'll show you how they come out of the box in one big sticky clump. It's disgusting. <laughs> then there's other people, good candy, tough conversations. This one lady I work with, her name's Charlene. And Charlene, she's a nice lady, and her candy is top notch. She's got Skittles in bags, which is important. Because some people will just have loose Skittles or loose M&Ms in a bowl, and everybody will put their hands in there, and then we have to wear a mask for a year and a half, and I don't like it. <laughs> But Charlene cares about people, so she's got Skittles in bags, which I like, but the only thing about Charlene is she's an oversharer. She tells you too much about her life way too quickly. And I didn't know that the first time I went and asked for some candy. I walk over there, I'm like, hey, Charlene, mind if I have a bag of Skittles? And she's like, that's what they're there for, Bill. I'm like, thank you so much. I love Skittles. They're my favorite candy. She's like, they're my favorite candy too, Bill. It used to be Starburst, but that's the favorite candy of my ex-husband that used to beat me. <laughs> casual candy conversation. <laughs> now I gotta stand there and empathize for 15 minutes because I can't just make a joke and be on my way and be like, ah, oh, does he work here? I love Starburst too. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's my nemesis. My nemesis is an older lady named Margaret. And Margaret doesn't just have candy, she's got food, real food. Not, not, not raisins, real food. Because she's got all these kids that have grown up and moved out, and she still grocery shops at Costco like they live with her, so she buys all this food, doesn't know what to do with it, brings it to her work, and keeps it in her office that locks, and she's got everything. She's got those little orange crackers, the peanut butter. She's got granola bars, the soft kind that don't crumble into a million pieces. I don't know what's happening in the Nature Valley, but it needs to stop. Then she's got a little mini fridge with string cheese in it and that yogurt for ladies. I don't know what it does for you ladies, but I'm glad you have it. <laughs> I support your choice to eat that. <laughs> and then in their little mini fridge, she's also got a little freezer. And in the freezer, she's got toaster strudels. Yeah, toaster strudels. Yeah, I know, right? The Pop-Tarts of a two-parent household. <laughs> Yeah. 
Some of you guys are having a realization right now, like, oh, we used to have toaster strudels. And then we were a Pop-Tart family. Oh. Do you say nasty? You don't like toaster strudels? No? Oh, you absolutely love toaster strudels. Like, no, I love both my parents, and they're great. <laughs> I only have to go to one house tomorrow. <laughs> The only thing about Margaret is, though, she's got a little rule. If you take any of her food, you don't just get away with it scot-free. She's got a little quid pro quo. You have to go with her to church. Yeah, I know. And not one of those fun churches that they have, like, in an old movie theater where they're like, come on down. You can wear your pajamas. We don't care. We just want to worship the Lord and listen to music that kind of sounds like the Foo Fighters. It's not the Foo Fighters, but it kind of sounds like the Foo Fighters. <laughs> it's not that kind of church. It's not black people church, that's a fun church. It's old white people church. Those are two very different churches. <laughs> if you ever watch a movie and it's about black people church, they're the good guys in the movie, right? <laughs> they're trying to help a family, they're trying to help the community, maybe save the church. Medea's gonna be there, Whoopi Goldberg might show up. It's gonna be fun. Maybe a little bit corny, but fun overall. If the movie's about white people church, old white people church, who are they in the movie? They're the bad guys in the movie. <laughs> they're the ones that are like, you won't be dancing in this town, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> you do your gymnastics in silence. <laughs> That's the kind of church that she wanted me to go to, because one day I went in there and got some of those orange crackers with the peanut butter, and she's like, you know the deal, Bill? Take any of my food, you gotta go to church with me on Sunday. I'm like, I'll see you Sunday. Sunday rolls around, I didn't go to church. Monday, she found me. I was hiding from her, she found me. And uh, <laughs> she cornered me and she was like, hey Bill, missed you at church yesterday. You said you are gonna come, but you didn't, so I'm guessing you had a good excuse. And I was like, oh yeah, I was on my way. But then Jesus took the wheel. <laughs> and he wanted to go to brunch. <laughs> and I'm like, Sign me up, because when you go to brunch with Jesus, you get the drink for free. <laughs> and she goes, oh, Bill, you're so funny to some people. <laughs> yeah. Old white people church is good at passive aggressive, and she got me right in the heart with that one. <laughs> She's like, you said you were going to come to church, but you didn't come to church. And Bill, that's a lie. And a lie is a sin. Sounds to me like you could actually use some church in your life. And I'm like, you know what, Margaret? You're right. I could use some church in my life. I'll see you this Sunday. Sunday rolls around. I didn't go to church again. But what I did do <laughs> is I became friends with a janitor that has a key to her office. <laughs> so I just go and take food when she's not there. <laughs> because the Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> My name is Bill Squire. Thank you guys all so much for coming out. But, but she is a wonderful, wonderful lady, and uh, she's the best mom in the whole world. I'm a little biased, and it's Mother's Day this weekend, and I just want to let you know, Mom, I love you so much, and uh, as a, a little honor to you, uh, she always had a nickname for me, and uh, what was the nickname you always had for me? Bam Bam. And uh, that's what I'm going to call my album. <laughs>